speed, 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 fast, work fast. You know, uh, see what's going on, figure out what it takes to get there and go. Because in the life sound world, you, you don't have any choice. You know, show's only an hour, hour and a half. So you, you don't have 20 minutes to get a drum sound. You know, sometimes, I mean, I've done festivals where uh, I've been working with an act that's, you know, 56 to 64 input act. And there's no sound check. There's one song. They're going to come out and play one song. And that one song, you have to put a mix together uh, for, you know, any number of people. I, I did uh, the last touring I I, I did and the last I'm ever going to do uh, was with the Dead Weather with Jack White's band Dead Weather and uh, the very first show that I mixed uh, with no sound check whatsoever a console that I had in a rehearsal and a mix that I had only dialed in uh, in in headphones that I was pressing onto my ears over the 114 dB um, rehearsal volume uh, was in front of uh, the pyramid stage at Glastonbury. So, um, you know, I had about one song to figure it out for 177,000 people. That's what live sound takes away, you know, that, that, that gives you, okay, you know, address the problems, what needs to be fixed, and work down the line, and, and go, go fast. I have, I've never really had a normal session in the normal session sort of idea with Jack. I mean, there's never a deal where, okay, the band shows up an hour early, we get sounds, you know, then the band plays it a few times, then we cut it. You know what I mean? That doesn't really ever happen. Uh, the band shows up, they start learning the song, and, um, and while they're learning the song, which, um, you know, maybe 10 minutes, it may be five, I'm getting sounds, and then we roll tape. And once we roll tape, I, I don't change anything. I've had 10 minutes, I've had, I've had an hour. You know, an hour is better than 10 minutes. But once we roll tape, I just try to figure out what I'm gonna do later, make some notes, you know. Working with Jack White, we have eight tracks. So, so we're going to make a rock record on eight tracks. Now, uh, it's one thing to make a rock record on 170 tracks where you have nine bass tracks and uh, you have, you know, four sets of sampled snare drums and uh, four sampled kick drums along with the analog kick drum and everything is chopped and cut and pasted and everything's in order. And then, you know, you've got 40 tracks of guitars and you've got all this stuff and strings and all this. You know, um, that's a thing. And guess what? It's really easy to make that sound really big. Guess what? It's easy to make it sound big. You've got all this stuff. The strange thing is, though, is that really to make it sound big, you have to take all that stuff away. So it's really more about the space in the space around the music than it is about the actual music. I have this sort of idea that the more tracks you put on a song, uh, the less uh, faith you have in the song's quality. Uh, in other words, a really great song really doesn't need much more than acoustic guitar, vocal, piano. I mean, Bob Dylan, Joni Mitchell. I mean, even the Beatles in their, you know, a lot of their ways, they weren't complicated. The, the, the music wasn't complicated. Um, and, and obviously the Beatles were recording on four tracks. Yes, they did a lot of bouncing and a lot of things, but... but but basically they had limits, they had certain limits. And nowadays the recording technology allows us to not have limits. So what ends up happening is bands end up doing, okay, well I'm gonna record, uh, cause I'm just using preamps, I'm not using a console, and I'm using Pro Tools, which will just play back everything I record. So I'm gonna record six tracks of guitar, and that's one guitar track, but it's six tracks. Now, and then I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna double it. And then I'm going to do this fill part in the middle, and that's going to be six tracks. And then I'm going to do this, and there's going to be a solo, and that's six tracks, and there's this, and there's this. And pretty soon, you're, you're up around 40 tracks of guitars. Now, each six tracks of guitars, those six tracks 
if I gave the, you those six tracks and I gave you those four six tracks and I gave you those four six tracks and I gave you whoever you are over here, if I gave them to all of you and said, okay, give me the best guitar sound back on one track, all every single person I gave it to would be different. Now, if I'm a producer, all right, I don't want that vision. That vision's dumb. That's a, that's a stupid vision. What I want is I want it to come back the way I wanted it to sound. The lack of commitment is the destruction of good music. I think if the Beatles would have had Pro Tools, I don't know what would have happened. Would they have made great music? Sure, songs are great. But, I, and I, in my mind, I feel like that uh, a good producer in George Martin would have made choices that focused the band into, you know, what they wanted to do. Um, uh, so to me, uh, commitment, making a commitment about sounds, making a commitment about track count, making a commitment to fit a song within a certain, you know, framework, uh, and, then, and then being done with it is the most important part of the business we're in. So the limit, those limitations, having just the limitations of eight tracks, uh, sort of push you into a, it pushes you into a box that when you're done, that's what you have. And uh, for some people, that that is a, an amazing amount of freedom. I can tell you that it's an amazing amount of freedom for me that if I get a really great recording in this, you know, parameter, then when we go to mix, I can literally mix a song in 25 minutes. Uh, because... You know, you can't change the hi-hat level, except for adding a little EQ. And the only way to make the snare louder is for me, as the song's playing back, to, to play the snare drum every time it goes by. You know, so, you know, here's how you make the snare louder. Pap, 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 pap. You know, that's how you make it louder. How do you make the kick and snare louder? You just make the drums louder. You know, I mean, I change the EQ a little bit. Or, or I'll take sometimes and route, a, route the drum track to like a transient designer. And then just point, make the like point the transient out the, so the transient time just goes pop, and then I'll bring it back into an EQ and just roll all the top end off. So the basically makes the kick drum anything below about a hundred cycles go pop. Okay, just put that in a little bit. I mean, you just you 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 those limitations force you to figure out how to get what you want. How do I get this? You know, how do I get make this compete with 170 track behemoth bullshit mixes on eight tracks. How, how do I do it? How do I have to do it? That's how we do it. You just have to be creative. So, so those limitations force you into creative little boxes. And so for me, it's like, okay, let me pick a microphone, I put it in front of something, and then let's put that to a track. Or let's put five microphones on something and put it to a track. You know, and, and then print that vision of it. I remember what your question was. It has nothing to do with it. And you